Hey guys, I wanted to uh, quickly tell you a little about my first um, imaging session with the new um, QHY163M. Uh, I literally took me like two months to get it out and uh, to to the backyard and set up, um, but I finally did it, and I wanted to quickly talk about it because. As, an, as a DSLR guy, this was obviously a little bit of a learning experience, um, but um, I'm pretty happy. I mean, I did expect a little bit, you know, uh, more um, quality in terms of like maybe less noise or more signal than I, I, than I, than I got, but I think because I was using a... Um, the Rokinen uh, 135 millimeter at 2.8, my Botter filters um, work at with 2.8, f2.8 and up. And so I was really at the limit and I'm skeptical as to how much signal I really got through those filters because I was shooting really fast. Um, but I ran into a little bit of an issue and uh, I could show you some of my pictures that I've done in one night. Um, uh, and I could also show you the issue that I ran into. So uh, let's, um, let's show you right now. So the first thing is I went in SharpCap, right? And I had issues connecting my camera. As you could see, when I go to uh, select this camera, it connects and the frames should start moving. You see it goes uh, three, it's gonna go to three, four. So that means that uh, uh, data is being read and being sent to the computer. I'm gonna uh, take off the cap and as you can see, the screen went white. So we're getting signal, right? Uh, initially, my problem was that it would not connect and um, it all had to do with the drivers. Uh, and the thing that, uh, that happened was after I downloaded a sharp, after I downloaded SharpCap 3.2, there was some patch from QHYCCD that, uh, that they said you can download and that messed everything up. It took me a little while to figure this out, but uh, for the life of me, for like, for the first two hours, I could not get anything off the camera. It was really, um, I was really struggling because, you know, I didn't have a lot of time. And uh, so I took two objects uh, in one night. I did IC1805. Actually, I did the white field of both the heart and soul nebula. And then I did the... Uh, NGC 1499, which is the California Nebula. I shot both of them uh, with minute subs for an hour, or actually less. 40 to 50 minutes I shot each object. I shot Heart and Soul in both H Alpha and, and O3, and I shot uh, California and HA only. Once, um, once I did that, I went and I stacked them in um, in uh, Deep Sky Stacker, and let me first show you what, what what happened first. So, this is what came off of the stack in um, one second. How do you? So this is what came off the stack, right? Uh, as you could see, let me scroll down. Uh, let me stretch the image a little more. First of all, there's a line that goes across here, right? That's number one. Number two, as you can see, look at this vignetting all around. This is not a good stack. So my calibration failed here. And I was thinking, well, what can go wrong? Because my flat frame for H alpha looked like this. I could stretch it a little more for you guys, and you could see that it's a pretty good um, flat frame. And then I found the issue. When I looked to my um, 
my uh, dark frame. Take a look at this. It looked like this. This is a stretched image. It was totally gray. What is this, right? And so I finally figured out what the issue was. So I connected the camera using this method when I was shooting the objects, but when I was creating my dark frames and my dark flat frames, I actually used the ASCOM method. And look at this. I connected the camera uh, like this. And where is my little pop-up? I'm not getting a pop-up anymore. That's interesting. Here we go. Here's the pop-up, right? So I set my gain. Um, and I set my offset, I think. Oh, look at this. Now there's an offset. There wasn't an offset. Because let me show you. Let me go to my work drive. And go to my darks. This is the, this is the ASCOM method, right? As you can see, there's a gain setting, but there's no offset setting. So I think what happened was I wasn't uh, taking them at the proper offset. I see it now though. This is weird. Anyhow, you should probably use the same method of connecting the camera for your calibration frames and your image acquisition frames. Because after I did it using the regular method of connecting to the camera, where are my new darks? Take a look at this setting. I have my offset here, right? I have my gain and then I have my offset. So that when I went and I looked into my other dark frame, this is how it looks. Here's the new dark. Now this is a lot better. Now notice this line right here. That's exactly the line that comes in in my light frames. So, after properly stacking it, um, this is what I got. Let's close the original. Original came out like that. As you can see, it's a lot better. There's no vignetting anywhere. There is no line at the bottom. And by the way, if you are using these uh, CMOS cameras from QHY or ASI, don't do any, I think for QHY maybe more specifically, but maybe not. Don't do bias frames. Uh, I don't think the cameras behave very well when you do such short exposures. So the recommended method is to do your lights, your darks, then your flat frames and then your dark flat frames and that should be enough and uh, as you can see um, I'm pretty happy with this stack right here so this is my uh, 40 this is a 50 minute I think expo so 60 minute exposures I think there's like 50 subs and I didn't even guide for this because of my issue with all these camera connections the first time around um, yeah, so I mean, on an AVX without guiding for a minute, I'm pretty happy. Like if we, let's go in deeper. Um, pinpoint stars, good signal. And this is not process. This is like literally just the stack. Uh, oh, that's not good. So now let's look at the O3 that I got. O3 is obviously very light. I already rotated it. Um, so just a little O3 signal and I even played a little round and I did a pre preliminary stack. Uh, obviously you wouldn't stack without first uh, processing the individual uh, channels, but you know, I'm just playing around. So, you know, we're getting light co color and everything. Um, and then here's the, um, the uh, California Nebula. You can see the cloudy uh, texture here. So not bad. The, I think this is a f total 40 minute exposure. So I mean, it's great, uh, but I expected a little more um, signal. As you can see, there is noise here. 
I thought that there's going to be no noise because it's a, you know, a cooled camera. But apparently, um, well, what did I expect? When I shot in the winter on my DSLR, you know, my, my sensor was like at minus 10. This I shot at minus 20. Okay, so a little better. Although, yeah, the DSLR sensor probably heats up as it's being used. But okay, no, I can live with this. Um, so that's the first light of, uh, of, of the camera. I will next connect my telescope to it and shoot uh, some stuff closer in uh, and for longer, longer, longer exposures. And hopefully um, we'll get some good images. But overall, um, it's a nice camera. I mean, uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's a little counterintuitive to use in, in SharpCap because at this point I'm still... I still don't understand like see the frames are going right now at a thousand milliseconds if I okay let's make let's say I make this 60 um, 60 seconds right so now they started going at 60 seconds when I start capturing right and I want to do 20 images like what is it gonna do is it gonna start from scratch see first of all it closed the window you got to go back into it like, is it shooting the first frame at 60 seconds or is it continuing where it left off the first frame? A little confused on that. My output is PNG. That should be actually a fit. But, um, you know, just a little inexperience. Uh, I'll get used to it. But overall, very happy. And so, uh, as you can see, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, and uh, you get some... Uh, Pretty cool uh, results. So uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, if you like uh, the videos I'm making, subscribe, hit the like button. Um, that's the first time I'm saying that, but I think um, you got to do that. So thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you later.